Hey, it's Shane from GotRom.com. Do you want to jump higher? Do you have aspirations of jumping like Jordan? Then listen up, because in this video, I'm about to share with you the secrets to human flight. So let's talk about how jumping higher is actually quite simple. Becoming explosive and jumping higher is a simple process once you understand a few basic principles. The most fundamental principle is called the SED principle. SED stands for Specific Adaptation to Imposed Demands. This means that the body will adapt specifically to the stimulus that you impose on it. That means if you lift heavy weights slowly, like a bodybuilder, you'll get better at lifting heavy weights slowly. Seems simple, right? It is, don't fight it. On the other hand, if you lift weights explosively and regularly bounce around doing various sprinting and jumping activities, you will get better at sprinting and jumping and being explosive. Duh. For example, imagine a street baller who's been playing basketball his whole life. This guy can dunk even though he's like five foot eight. Even without ever touching a weight, he's throwing down windmill dunks with ease. Of course, he might become an even better athlete by incorporating strength training, just like Michael Jordan did in the summer of 1990 to take his game to the next level. But getting back to the said principle, the said principle teaches us that if your goal happens to be to jump higher, then you better train your legs to produce more force, more rapidly on a continual and ongoing basis. That way your body will adapt to specifically be more explosive and thus jump higher. In other words, to jump higher, you have to get more powerful. And here is the exact formula for getting more powerful. Power equals strength, times speed. This simple definition clues us into what we need to be training if we want to jump through the roof. How do you develop strength? How do you develop speed? How do you ensure you're working on the right muscles to develop force in the right direction, aka vertical force production? Essentially, anytime you're moving a load in the vertical direction, either slowly with heavy weights like a squat, or quickly like your own body in a vertical jump, you are training your body to become more efficient in that movement pattern. In real world terms, this means you need to build your strength with movements like squats, Olympic lifts, and plyometrics, all with heavier weights or faster speeds over time, just like Michael Jordan did. But beyond the weight room, you also need to increase your speed of vertical force reduction. In other words, when your hip, knee, and ankle bend as you're preparing to jump, and your vertical force production. In other words, the extension of all these joints as you push the ground away and take flight. Depending on whether you're a springy athlete or a more strength-oriented athlete, you might need to train the other quality a little bit more. So there's some individual variability in there. But simply stated, you need to lift heavy weights, medium weights, light weights, and your own body weight. And you need to do all of that faster over time. What this might look like in an actual beginner workout is this. For example, you could start with a warm up of jogging, skipping, shuffling, and some low level plyometrics. Then follow that up with some accelerations and sprinting. Accelerations and sprinting will help your vertical force production because you're training your nervous system to fire more rapidly, which helps all of your athletic movements. When you move on to plyometrics, it could look like this. Exercise one would be a single leg box jump, three sets of five reps per leg. Then you could do some altitude landings to focus on your deceleration abilities. And then you could do your vertical leap to focus on your acceleration abilities. When you move on to the strength training, you could practice some hang snatches or hang cleans. As the weights get heavier, you move on to things like front squats and walking lunges. And finally, you might finish with some calf raises. Notice that the calf work, contrary to my teenage self's belief is only a minimal part of a vertical jump program. The calves only contribute maybe 10% to the overall force production in a vertical leap. Of course, this exercise routine assumes that you have a little training experience. You have a little background. You have some technical proficiency in all of these lifts, which unfortunately is not a good assumption in many cases. In fact, most people have never been taught how to jump and land, how to perform the Olympic lifts or even squat and lunge with good technique, which is why part of me shies away and cringes from giving generic kind of workout recommendations to everyone on the internet because it'll be very appropriate for some and not for others. But I wanted to give you at least a starting template 
which can be helpful. If you're not sure if you're doing these exercises correctly, I recommend you find a good coach who can help you, who has experience with strength training, plyometrics, Olympic weightlifting, track and field, things like that. Now I wanna give you a quick case study about a 40 year old washed up meathead who can still touch the rim even though he's not training for it. Yes, I can still touch the rim even though I'm not training for it and I'm getting older. I'm not training my vertical leap because I'm just training for health and general athleticism. I do lift weights as fast as I can. I sprint, I jump, and I do those things as fast as feels good because I'm not competing against anyone, I'm doing it for health. There's nothing impressive about my accomplishment of being able to touch the rim, except that I can also do the splits in every direction. In other words, I'm pretty well-rounded. I'm a little bit fast, a little bit explosive, a little bit flexible, I'm pretty darn athletic for nearly 40. If you care less about being well-rounded and doing the splits and things like that, and you just wanna be fast, powerful, and explosive, it would be easy for you to pass my meager accomplishments and move into the realm of Jordan-like jumping ability because you could focus on even heavier weights, heavier Olympic lifts, faster plyometrics, faster sprinting, and you'd be more explosive than I am. It's all about priorities. So summing up, to jump higher, you have to get more powerful. Power equals strength times speed. Get stronger, get faster, you're gonna jump higher. When you find that you've increased your strength and you've gotten your plyometrics bouncier, you will find yourself well on the way to being that freak who's got pogo sticks for legs. Of course, there are many other aspects to jumping higher and being more athletic in general. Body composition matters, nutrition, sleep, balance, coordination. But I hope this video gave you at least the foundation, the basic ingredients to jumping like Jordan. Now go train hard and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.